it's essentially just about like two, like couples and people who fall in love and they're just nerds like anime nerds they like to cosplay they like to play video games and i'm like this is me and i'm like everyone like us deserves love we shouldn't have to hide like our interests from our loved ones and stuff like that and it made me feel like so much more grateful for my partner because i'm like i can share these things with him and i don't feel (laughs) weird about it yo what's up everybody welcome to the third episode of season two of life with anime podcast Where you come to be entertained, find some escape and relief, and we talk about the impact the anime has on our lives. We are your hosts, Family Man Joe. And Mr. Music Major. How y'all doing? And today, we have another special guest with us. Um, little intro for this young lady. Up and coming content creator. She's been doing some content creating for a year and a half now, I believe. Almost two years, based on, based on what I saw. Okay, um, Relatively new friend of ours as well. I feel like we got to know, know her a little bit over um, talking about some different anime and having some strong opinions on some stuff. A woman who also, I, and I had to ask more about this, but has gotten her husband to watch a couple of different anime who I don't think is an anime watcher. Um, um, but we'll get we'll get yeah we'll get to talk about that a little bit more. Yeah. But today Aww. we have Miss Annamel with us today. How are you doing, Mel? I'm doing great. Thanks for inviting me on. I'm really excited for this. Also, I really love the intro. It was great. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> really, really appreciate you coming on the show. Appreciate you uh, taking the time out of your day, out of your night to be here with us. I know it's kind of late for you. So again, really, really appreciate your time. Yeah. So again, about the husband, I guess let's get into that because that was the last <laughs> thing I said and I was curious about. Yeah. Um, I was curious. So does your husband watch anime normally? Do you, is, are you the reason he watches some anime? How? Um, what's that dynamic like? So... Long story short, the reason I'm a One Piece fan is because of him. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we've actually been together for an ultra long time. I'm talking about like 13, 14 years. Hey, uh, now? <laughs> hey, listen, yeah. I'm right there with you. I'm <laughs> and right there with you. he was reading One Piece when we first started dating. But okay. I started watching One Piece, I think, like five years into dating. I was just like, you know, in a flux with anime. I started off with anime like most people with Dragon Ball Z, Sailor Moon, and things of that nature. Uh, Bleach was like my, oh, okay, I really love anime. But then it kind of fell off because Bleach had a lot of fillers. And at some point, I was like, I don't know what's going on with Bleach. I guess it's over. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, that happened. So, you know, life happens. College, you move on. And then One Piece just presented itself through my husband. I binged that about 800 episodes in like three and a half months and here hey, we are me and you both let's <laughs> go <laughs> yeah yeah Joe, yes, you it, it was it was eat sleep and everything one piece like if i was doing something like cooking yes. or whatever we were multitasking yes I love it. I was the same way. We I was on vacation at one point and the room didn't have the best Wi Fi. So like I would like if we went to a spot with good Wi Fi, I would literally have my phone open on Crunchyroll downloading the episodes to my phone so when I went to our room I could still watch the episodes. Like, yeah, I'm I'm with you on the binge. Um yeah. But okay, so your so your husband is an anime watcher then. Um what I we had yeah. seen some stuff. Obviously you convinced him to watch Undead Unluck. Um yes. and so wow. how is how has that been going? And how did you um, convince him to watch that? Because I'm trying. Yeah, I'm took, on episode two, <laughs> and I'm just like, woo. Um, you know, obviously he watches some of my content, and I think I did an episode on Undead Unluck, like a, a small snippet. It was like a larger episode, but I talked about Undead Unluck on that episode. And I think after like episode 16, one of the most recent episodes on Undead Unluck, he was like, oh. The concept and the premise is kind of interesting. The universe is really different. And I was like, look, the beginning is really weird. Stay with me, though. Really Really weird. weird. Like, I was cringing and, like, (laughs) closing my eyes and walking away. Like, what the hell am I watching? Um, (laughs) But I was like, it gets really good. Uh, I'm fully caught up on the manga. And I promise you, based on, like, your interests that I'm aware of, you'll like it. So he decided to pick it up. Uh, He does a really funny thing where he likes to hide that he's watching an anime that I've suggested even after he said no the first time. Oh, that's so, so I've sweet. kind of been like <laughs> so I've kind of been like seeing him watch it around the corner. Um but you know, I'm under the suspicion he's reading. I'm not sure. Yeah. Great, because when we get down the list, I have a couple of questions. At least one in particular for Undead Unlock. Like there is it, if you say yes, then I'm probably going to watch it and pick up the manga. I, okay. I mean, I'm gonna say you're the reason I picked it up. Um, and I'm I don't think 
I can't remember if I caught up or not, but I got to the seasons basically. So I got I got through their whole development that they had together, um, without giving away any spoilers. But I'm I'm on the seasons. Um, okay. So you were the reason I picked it up. You're like you got to get past it. I tried to yeah. I tried to read like before we talked. I tried to read them like, bro, what in the world is this nonsense? And then <laughs> and then it got better, and I was like, all right, cool, cool. So you know. Yeah. It's it's crazy like that. I think there's a lot of manga that's doing that lately. Um, Dadadan that's coming out like in October. Is that this like year. that too? Oh my god! I was so <gasps> triggered by the first few chapters. Okay, I was no. so triggered because I've heard so many good things about it's it. It's really oh, good though, right. but I'm so triggered by the first few episodes. Like the the whole <sighs> premise of Dadadan is absolutely insane. Like the objective of the manga is like, oh, it's like that, huh? Which, again, I love the premise of Undead Unluck to where, like, these two, like, unlucky, undead, like, they, like they mesh well. Um, but, yeah. geez, there is a lot of just... It to- lot. And that's the thing. It toned down. Like, it becomes... It's the... the mal- of it all, the unwanted touchiness of it all. I probably should. I'm gonna bleep yeah, that word out. Yeah, but we are not the using that word. Touch, yeah. We are not using that word. <laughs> the unwanted touchingness of it all, like it, it tones down. It becomes a lot. It's a lot better. So I've, yeah. I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed the read so far. Once I got going, I was like, okay, all right. Really quickly, um, yo, so you got socials? Like, what's yes. going on with your socials? Like, let's let, like, go ahead and shout those out. Oh, all right. Yeah, you, know, you know, I most put po- I mostly post on YouTube to be honest. We're working on a weekly basis episode sort of situation. Um, so you can find me at it's Annie Mel. Um, just plain and simple on YouTube. Uh same on TikTok, but on Instagram it's it's underscore underscore Annie Mel. You can find yeah. me on all of those platforms. Um and I feel like on Instagram you'll mostly see me posting on my stories a lot. Uh if you were there, if you were yeah. there during the Jujutsu Kaisen time, you know, it was oh pretty wild. <laughs> the, break, the breakdowns of the episodes, Whoa. I loved it. And I was, I was like, I the thing, I'd be going through stories like, I haven't watched the episode yet. I'll come back to Mel's story later today. Like, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. Honestly, yeah, I had man. to make sure that I had, like, spoiler warnings. So yeah. I was like, this is going to be, like, 30 minutes of me watching. But in reality, it's going to be an hour of me watching this, taking breaks. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, no, honestly, Mel, that's how I like got to know you through your stories and through JJK because I was going on a binge of posting JJK on the same time like you were doing your stories on JJK. And I was like, ah, this is gold. Okay, so let, let's let's start with a little with some questions. So your anime origin story. How did you get into anime? Like what was your what was your first anime that got you like into the business, into like actually liking anime? Um, well, I guess you could say it's Sailor Moon. Uh, yeah. Sailor Moon was airing when I was a kid. Uh, so that's what I was watching growing up. That was kind of what hooked me to anime, even though I didn't know it was anime then. And then yeah. I think a lot as, of us were in that boat. Yeah. And as I got older, it was Inuyasha and Bleach and Naruto. Uh, I hadn't started watching One Piece yet uh, because the, the dub was kind of weird. So those I would say were <laughs> those kids was cringy. When oh San- my god! Sanji was sucking on a lollipop, and it was supposed to be a, a cigarette. Yeah, a was, cigarette? Yeah. yeah, it was crazy. It, it it was it was really bad. So I would say those were kind of like my gateways to anime. Okay. Okay. Evidently, I must be older than than you guys. Because you mean, you, I know you're older than me. I'm, I, we're not about to, I'm not going to quiz Mel. On I, age I'm not she either. Wants to give that out. So. But man, like I like again because she said Sailor Moon, and I remember Sailor Moon. But again, like for me, like I remember when anime was on the Sci-Fi Channel, and so like oh. Ninja Scroll was like a thing, and oh he, he, he's old now. Like Akira was a thing. I just, no, no, don't lie. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I'm I'm a '90s baby, an early '90s baby. Okay. Same. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You, so then, then we're but, around the same age. Then. I, I don't know. I was yeah. J- Joe's mid '90s. He can't have in this conversation. How am I? Mi- I'm I'm mid early. I'm '94. I'm '94. You said mid early. Exactly. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I I I don't have a problem. I'm '91. Okay. I'm '90. Okay. All right. Okay. So there you go. We're all within the same years. But I was yeah. About to say, yeah. P, P is an old soul too, though. That's that's the other thing. Uh, he's an old soul. He done, he's gotten to the point where technology is no longer his friend. 
So <laughs> that that happened a little bit too quickly. Joe is it lying. Did. <laughs> Joe is lying. Do I need to pull up I the mean, credits of of us talking about how uh, threads was a thing and you could not understand what I was trying to say? Because we could do that. No, literally, I was trying to explain to this man. Like, listen, threads is just Twitter for Instagram. It's connected to your Instagram. Yes. Like, that's the basic way of explaining it. No, there's no con con uh, like crazy complicated thing about it. And he's like, bro, I can't find it. I'm on Twitter right now. I can't find it. I'm like, Preston, it's not on Twitter. It is Instagram. Go to your Instagram. I had oh, he no. called me. I had to go and screen share. I'm sorry, Pete. No. I'm done. I'm done, bro. This was, I'm not supposed no. to bash you, bro. I love you, dog. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, wow, it's Joe. okay. It happens to all of us. I'm sorry, wow, bro. Joe. I'm sorry, dog. In my defense, I'm sorry. in my defense, I never had heard of Threads. And Joe was like, you need to download I the- hadn't heard of it either. What is, what is Threads? I mean, it, was, it, was day it started one of off pretty bad, you know, so it's okay. Yeah. Are you still are you still on Threads, Mel? Do you use it? I at all? am. I I just came back recently because I noticed they're now using tags because that was that I was the most that. annoying thing in the beginning was there were no tagging mechanisms, there was no like filtering or anything like that. Yeah. It was just like, "Oh, you just post and there's like thousands of people that you can see with no regard of filtering or people and, like, that you follow." Yeah. Yeah, no trying. Like I couldn't find things on there. Like I couldn't find specific things I was looking for. It was really, it was really difficult. It it's was annoying. Weird. So I haven't, I haven't been back on there. And we talked about creating a Twitter. I haven't done that yet. I don't know if if we're gonna do that or not. But yeah, there's a weird space now. Anyway, <laughs> back to it though. Sailor Moon. Who is your favorite Sailor Scout? Oh my God, this is this is a hard one because you know the dubbed Sailor Moon is kind of weird, and they change the personalities a lot. I would say it's Sailor you. Jupiter. Like, she likes to cook. She's okay. kind of a badass. She was a little bit of a tomboy, and I was kind of a tomboy growing up, too. So I was like, I like her. I'm, I, I, I love it. I love it. Sailor Mars, but for me, but... I was going to say Sailor Mars is probably, yeah. Sailor Mars is, like, second for me. But then I okay. learned that they changed her whole personality for the American dubbed, and her personality is actually very different, and she doesn't actually fight with Sailor Moon as much. They're actually really close. It's weird. In the dub, they are. They absolutely yeah. are. Yes, yeah, I've, exactly. I've I've realized because I was watching. Um, shout out Girl Taku, uh, another anime podcast. Um, not sure if you've heard of them at all, Mel. But I they, have. I like they their had, stuff. I can't remember who they had on here. Uh, insert and now they were. She was a big big Sailor Moon um, fan. I guess think they all three were. But they were talking about how the different versions of Sailor Moon that they were. I'm like, I had no clue there were yeah. so many versions and so many different yeah. remakes, I guess, of Sailor Moon. I, I got educated on that a little By bit. By the way, Sailor Moon beats your favorite character, Goku, out the, out the water. Who's for favorite anybody character? Who, for anybody who Who's just wants to, like, oh, okay. to, oh my God. to go on that rant. I remember I you seeing those debates online for a long time, and oh, I was, was like, mm, I don't think I want to engage in this conversation. It's I'm not gonna a conversation. Step, I'm going to step very far away. It's you need, Yeah, <laughs> stay away from the people that, but can they beat Goku? That, uh, that's just, yeah. But it, yeah. It, it's not even can they beat Goku at this moment. It's like legit, like people really think that Goku is the end all be all. And I can name 10 characters right now that will wipe that man. But map. I get like the thing is the thing is I get it right like you I get why everyone's like can they be go I, again they take it too far but like I get why yeah I get why Goku is like the top echelon for a lot of people one it's the anime that everyone ninety nine percent time knows and that mm. they started with and we see Goku continue to just constantly become stronger and stronger and stronger and does all these crazy he's amazing not things. Also, strongest he, in his he just heart. never dies on top of that he though he never dies like the man is like unbeatable like he's beatable it's, but he's unbeatable it's ridiculous but it's I, ridiculous I though but I agree like you said you go ahead that. He's not he's not even the strongest in his verse though. Like we cannot he's have not. arguments. He's not. You're not even the strongest in your verse. Yeah. No, no but you're not. you're absolutely right. So let's let's kill all of the Goku versus conversations because they're just they shouldn't be combos. They shouldn't. They really shouldn't. Kind of wanted to know more about your journey as a content creator. What made you want to embark on this journey? What kind of got you into it? Obviously, like you said, you kind of grew up watching anime. 
Uh, your husband got you into One Piece, which we love to hear. Um, I did some digging and saw like your first post on YouTube was in October of 2021. You're talking about spooky season. Um, yeah. Your first TikTok was also kind of the horror thriller anime on at the same time. And then you kind of got into IG um, in December of 2022. So I'm just curious, like what, what made you want to start this journey of content creating that we're kind of new to <laughs> as well? <laughs> uh, it's kind of funny because I've done content creating in a lot of different ways uh okay. anime is anime is just the third try uh, oh really so, <laughs> so my my husband and i used to own a sports photography sports photography business we used to show ah. soccer um okay. so we have a bunch we have a bunch of filming equipment and camera equipment at home um next was skincare and now anime is the next one and i it kind of happened at a very like listless moment at my life i had just turned 30 and i'm like what am i doing am i doing things that are making me happy am i doing things that like make me feel fulfilled and i think i was watching um blue period which is an art anime that came out yes. on netflix and yes. it, it kind of felt like really inspiring to be like oh yeah. there's this guy who's never been interested in art before it's just picking it up and he's just discovering it as it goes along yes. and i'm like man i feel like i need something like that in my yes. life right now yeah. and i was talking to my best friend about it and i'm like man i just don't know what to do and she's like oh it seems like you have like a really big kick on anime right now like you've been watching a really wide diversification of anime yes. from what you normally watch. Why don't you do something like that? And that's how it started. Great friend. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely great friend. Okay. What? Okay. So then the, because I kind of want to go back to the first two uh, with the, with the sports and well, soccer, I guess specifically, not, not just because I'm an athlete, but you talking about soccer and skincare. Like how did, it's I guess, how did those athlete. each transition happen? What'd you say? Did, it's because you're an athlete, but go ahead, Joe. Oh my gosh, whatever. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, yeah, obviously being an athlete, it piqued my interest because I've, I've dealt with obviously a lot of sports photographers and videographers. So um, just curious, I like, guess, kind of like that transition of getting into that, you and your husband doing that, you doing the skincare thing, and then obviously you just told us about the transition to anime, but kind of even those first two phases of your content creation and your career. Yeah, so that kind of started off because I've always been a soccer fan. My uncle used to be a professional soccer player in Portugal. And okay. I kind of always wanted to own a business. I also played soccer all the way through high school before I tore my ACL. I've ah. been, a, yeah, I've been an athlete of sorts. Like I do athletic things. I enjoy working out. Uh, I did fencing four years in in college. So what? I've okay. done, yeah, I've done all sorts of things in terms of athletics. And I think like between my fiance and I, we were going through a lot to a lot of like soccer matches okay. and it kind of was like oh we want to be in the biz of soccer and that's kind of where it started <laughs> nice so that means you, okay. have, yeah. you have to like blue lock yeah i love blue lock she, I, yes yes i, I love blue lock blue. i knew she was a and blue it was lock fan. it was going on during the time of the world cup at the same yes. time so it was yes, like it was. it was like very well timed that was like was this is perfect. genius genius marketing it was perfect. Are you caught up on the manga? I can't remember. I not. just started reading the manga. Okay. Uh, so I watched the anime first, but I need to read the manga. And I think like I, I'm reading the chapters that have already been animated just to see if there's anything that didn't really get animated as well as like I wanted to. I plan on eventually getting to the point where they ended it like, you know, episode 24 and they're like what in like phase two already? Yeah. Oh, oh, yep. male, male. Yeah, me. man. Um, you you are in for the biggest <laughs> trip of your life. All right, um, cool. I'm I'm here for it. Yeah, I was gonna say because I didn't. I was saying it's interesting because I didn't when we started reading it. We, me and P. Perry said picked up at the exact same time and we're competing on how far we would get <laughs> before the other person with oh, the no. mic. <laughs> it it, it got crazy. I, I end up I end up mm. pulling off and beating them, but. We never, I don't think, I don't know if you did, P, but I definitely didn't go back and um, and read the previous chapters. Sure, I just picked up right I where did. the. Well, you know, I, better than me. I, I just like to see if the anime matches up to the manga and vice versa. So I always go back yeah. to, yeah. to do that. No, for sure. I think I would do that well. I've done that with soul leveling, like, um, which we don't have to get too much you into. I've read but it like four times. I've read it four times. So I'm like, I'm like, I, maybe, hold on. That was a little off. Let me check. I'm like, okay, they've, they've <laughs> done a very good job with solo leveling. From, they have, from, they have. Yeah, they've done a very, very good job. It's so it's, happy. It's, it's, it's good work. Uh, I haven't yeah. seen episode five yet, but episode I four, either. I, 
I enjoyed the emotional moment between him and the snake. It felt a little bit more intense being yes, animated than yes, watching it, it than be, it being read. I was like, all yes. right, this is really good. I'm very happy with this adaptation. No, it's it's been phenomenal. Episode five is good. Um, it's about to pick up. Episode six is when things are about to get crazy. Oh, yes. um, so yeah, you Mel, Mel knows. I don't think Preston. Have, how much have you read? Joe oh, Solo? I, I have read. You, did quite you finish it? A bit. No, I haven't. You I'm didn't like finish it. That's what I can't remember. Yeah, I like yeah. I'm past the part where he go anyway. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> All right. No, I, I'm no spoilers. spoilers. Yeah, no spoilers. I'm spoilers. I'm sorry. So I will okay. say what with doing your content journey and doing all of that stuff, um, what has been the most difficult part? <sighs> Consistency. Um, getting <laughs> getting like <laughs> getting like a proper schedule in place, you know, like the 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 technical aspects like color editing getting lighting correct. Like, I feel like I've had some experience with that in the past. So it was kind of like, all right, let me just cater it to where my location is, how I want the visuals to be for my channel. But then it's just like, all right, I, I want to film this. When can I film it? When can I sit yeah. down and yeah. actually do this properly? When can I like write this? It's It's the consistency and it's allocating the proper amount of time to actually get it done especially because obviously like you told us earlier you have an uh, you have a normal job a regular job outside of content creating and i feel like a lot of people get this in, uh, idea in their heads that content creators are all full-time content creators like there are some out there that are full-time content creators which you know is a, a joy i'm sure but obviously a lot of work as well because that's where yeah. you, you know that's how you make your living um but not every person that's out there creating content does this for a living does this all day long every day um they have obviously have regular jobs and then come back to this. This is just icing on the cake in a sense. Yeah. Um, so yeah I, yeah, yeah, I know we understand very well the difficulties of being consistent and, uh, and finding time to get stuff done really quickly. I, because with you, when you like it, like kind of like jolted my memory or just jolted some memory, you say that you write, like for me, that is such a hard thing. When I do like content creating, it is like sporadic on the spur of the moment. Ah. I saw a post and I, and like, I'm going to like make a post and react yeah, to yeah, it. Yeah. You on the other hand, write. How is that life like? Because even like dealing with YouTube and just seeing like different anime creators and content creators, like there is a lot of writing involved and that is just something yeah. that right now I don't have in my tool belt. So I think it really depends if I have to do like research on the topic and I'm talking about things are, that are really like thematic um, or things that have to do with life. I try to do my research and just read into the different themes and understand different themes of a show if I'm doing an analysis. Um, if it's analysis on a man manga, then it'll take me time. Even if I'm reading the manga at the moment or at time, I'll go in and I'll read. And my writing isn't intensive. It's like outline-ish I can't do like heavy block writing or else yeah. um I get I get tied up in it and then it isn't yeah. as like not spontaneous because it's not always spontaneous anyway but it isn't as free-flowing yes. and I try to I try to film in a free-flowing manner just because I feel like that's how my most authentic self comes out right. and I'm also able to speak more naturally that way so I bullet point and I outline. Sometimes okay. I will film things sporadically, but it'll be like, oh, I saw this. I want to do something. Let me just plot out, plot out real quick what I want to talk about. These are the three points that I want to hit. This is how I want to introduce my video. This is the title that's going to be the title for my video. All right, let's film. Okay. Wow. I was going to say too, P, because that you you talking about the the out the notes and the outlines versus like the block writing and it not being um as as natural even more as authentic really um and me and p talked about that about myself uh, i don't know if, i don't know if you remember mel my like review on the my like the 10 my top 10 anime of the new season so far yeah. and that was that was very block written and like trying to like oh. one i was also rushing it because my kids were going crazy out there <laughs> so like i'm dang near reading off a script and even like me and p talk like bro like you're just very monotone it's very hard to like it's not very energetic or like not necessarily inject but there's no energy in it really it's very flat yeah um boy but this last video that you put out of you well, these, spit. but i'm like so the last <laughs> videos i've been doing yeah with that with me spitting like and you talking about there's so much passion like those have all been like more on the p side of things like i saw something and i'm like okay nah forget this like set it up 
and just go off straight emotion. Um, but I do like how before you were saying, um, I've noticed your videos, you are very detailed in what you talk about. You you kind of not just say talk about the anime, but you talk about the themes in the anime, what you the different things that you noticed in it versus just kind of covering the generic of Sung Jin Woo fought a snake <laughs> kind of thing. Did you like, say you Sung Jin Woo? Sorry, Sung Janu. Thank you. Thank you, P. I guess you're very detailed with your work, and I, I've enjoyed watching your videos so far, Thank especially you. the video on Free Win, on, uh, Free Win um, which is doing very well. We got to talk about for it you. later, Joe. Don't get yeah. no, no, but Sorry. Me. Okay, my bad. Oh, my bad. My bad. I you're was getting trying, off I, track. I am. I am. I was trying to give her a flowers a little bit. I appreciate it. Thank you. I guess we'll jump into some anime impact. You know, obviously, this is life with anime. Um, but the first part of that is how... Obviously, you've been watching it for a while now. You from from a young age. So obviously, said like you said, Sailor Moon was kind of what started you on your anime journey. How, in any way, shape, or form, whether it's work, life, athletics, um, obviously, it's gotten you into the content creation. But how has anime itself um, made an impact on your life? And even to piggyback off that, what is the one anime that like completely like just changed your perspective on life? Oh well, I think that's kind of easy because it's One Piece. Uh, One Piece really changes your perspective on life because there's a lot of different ways that people are chasing their dreams and everyone has different dreams to chase. So it gives you kind of an awareness as to like people basically striving for that and not, you know, stopping at any roadblocks and always trying to surpass that. I would say that would be it. Um, I do, I do have a strong affinity for sports anime lately. Um, I really enjoy the way that some studios animate athletes and like the composition and physiology of an athlete and like the muscles and things like that. So um, I enjoy watching some sports anime and then it's like, oh, this is really fun. I want to go try it now. Um, So like I watched the Iwakakaru. It's a rock climbing, indoor rock climbing sport anime. And I was like, yeah, I really want to get into indoor (laughs) rock climbing now. And I had like a year where I was fixated on it. And then, you know, I moved on to something else. Snap. Okay. I had no clue that was an anime. I never heard rock climbing anime. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) There's a a lot of crazy, weird sports anime out there that I'm just like, oh, man, I kind of want to like try this out now. There's another one that's called Sun. Sunere, I'm not saying that right right now, Surune. And it's basically archery, but the Japanese version of archery where it's called Kido. That I need to watch. Yeah. That I need the, to watch. The bow is much bigger than I think regular archery yeah. and yeah. the way yeah. that they shoot it. But it's so beautifully animated because I think it's done by Kyoto Animation. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it, that it, one's a really nice one. There's this one anime, and I cannot think of the name, but it's like a free run anime to where like they compete against other um, teams, and it's like a race, but it's like a free run race to like where they're doing all this tumbling and flipping, and but it is absolutely amazing. Insert here. Yeah, okay. I I, I, I want to know the name of that. <laughs> is it the? It's not the one. With, is it the one with the bubbles? No, because there's a not no. not the one. Okay. This is because there's a girl. Okay. Okay. No, that, I think you're talking about the one, the parkour one that's called Bubble Dabble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's the okay. one I was thinking of. Okay, um, okay, cool. So that's the anime that's kind of changed your perspective on life. What, how, and again, how it has anime itself made an impact on your life? How has it um, changed? Like, it's obviously changed your perspective on things, but um, you know, have you had any moments where, like, with anime, that's like just like wow? Um, so there's this. Uh, I may be jumping ahead, but there's this romance anime that really kind of like made life for me and it's called okay. watakoi love is hard for otaku oh my god you are jumping i am so sorry um but it's essentially just about like two like couples and people who fall in love and they're just nerds like anime nerds they like to cosplay they like to play video games and i'm like this is me and i'm like everyone like us deserves love we shouldn't have to hide like our interests from our loved ones and stuff like that and it made me feel like so much more grateful for my partner because i'm like i can share these things with him and i don't feel (laughs) weird about it there are people i have conversations with about that and they're like yeah i have a hard time meeting people and telling them about my interest in anime and manga they think it's weird um and obviously this is probably a little bit before it's become a little bit more mainstream now but i'm like man that that's really like sad to hear to me and I feel like that anime is so great and really hits home and it's so relatable for anyone who feels like that type of, you know, anime fan, that otaku or 
however you deem yourself. Yeah. And even for the anime, the fact that like there's these four characters, like I won't get into like spoilers, but like for the most part, except for one, maybe two, everybody does not want everybody to know that they like, like that they are an otaku or that they like yeah. manga or they like cosplaying. So it's like really relatable because sometimes we don't want people to know what we like and all of like the, the nerdiness and the geekiness that we do. But like this anime, same, like they are yeah. trying to like, profusely hide the fact that they are like an otaku to the core so yeah right anime but that but that took it for me and i was like i shouldn't have to feel that way so yeah. friends friends that i have even coworkers, i tell them like yeah i watch anime even before mm-hmm. it became mainstream and i was like yeah. i'm not gonna hide this there's no reason yeah. to hide this this is just a different form of media that people are not as aware of and maybe they can learn about it through my mentioning it and through my exposure yeah. Absolutely. Oh man, I love that. I the the fact I I would I want to say I'm jealous of you and your husband <laughs> obviously being able to have that. Um I think my my wife <laughs> yeah. Like uh, obviously my wife has done a phenomenal job of like dealing with my anime and my nerdiness in that sense. And she's I've gotten her to watch a bunch of anime. She's probably watched at least 15 different anime. Um and I've gotten her some. She likes Attack on Titan. Um Good for I want to get her into Free Run and I'm curious to see if she would like Free Run. Mm. Um but she's also enjoyed um uh, summertime rendering was one that she really liked. That one's a good one. It's a oh, good one, very good one. There's been a couple that we've watched, like even from the early dating stage, like where she's like, she, she did a good job of watching some stuff with me. She definitely wasn't really into it, but yeah. she was. She's been a trooper, so I appreciate her. <laughs> but I, I will say yes, I'm a little jealous of the fact that you have someone that you could like literally just both watch together, go off to, and it's not a big Bruh. deal at all. No, uh, <laughs> I think me and Pete kind of feel Bruh. the same way. Listen. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> We love See, we love our wives. I love you. Babe. Love, love you very, very much. She, she it's, is. It's like, really funny that you say that because I I don't know if it's because it's my friend circle, but I have another couple friend that they're just a level above. They go to cons together. They cosplay together. They watch together. They have like an entire room filled with manga. They go shopping regularly for manga. I'm like, yo, you guys are on another level. Like, my wife is like, I don't understand all this. Like, what? Like, what's the what's the point of all of this? I'm like, babe, you, I I don't. I don't know how to tell you. She's like, you haven't even read half of these. Like, no, I haven't read all of these, but like, I know what they're all like. I got the manga of all my favorite anime. Like, my top five anime I have the manga for. Like, it's just, it's just hard to explain. I get it. So, I I will say, back to Free Rent, which we, because we, we, we gonna get on to Free Rent too, but I feel like Amber would like Free Rent. I hope she would like Free Rent. Um, um, female protagonist. With yeah. other great female, like uh, yeah, yeah. I, I I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna let the season finish, um, and then I'm gonna get or however long it's in. I don't know. Is it is it 24? It's about to be 24. Uh, I'm not sure how many episodes. I think I saw 28 episodes somewhere. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw 28 episodes somewhere. So I'm I'm not sure, but it's okay. it's definitely got some time because what they just dropped episode 21 S- last week. Yes, right? 21. Yes, 21. Yeah, which so I, I think just we may have. 19. <laughs> really? Just okay. 19. We may so. have like seven episodes left. Okay. Well, maybe maybe now would be a good time because by the time we catch up, I'd be. By the time we start catching up to it, she might we might be at that point. So, um, but yeah, I've gotten here to watch a couple of different things. So. So. Um, I feel like you just need to find the right genre for somebody. And, and then they're the kind of like hooked. I, I'm, and for her, we were talking about this. Yeah, we were talking about this, me and Pete, on, I can't remember if it was our first episode or when we, yeah, I believe it was our first episode um, of season one, um, was like, my wife is a very, she loves books. She's big into books. So obviously growing up reading Harry Potter and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But like now she's really big into like fantasy and romance um, novels. So like one, I don't know, do you read, are you a big reader at all or no? Um, I read a lot of, yeah, no, no, not really. (laughs) Okay. Okay. I'm like, there's this one series and there's obviously a bunch, but this is one called Akatar, a a crown of thorns and roses that she's really big into, but it's got like dragons and fae and fairy and vampires, like all this different stuff, but there's all, there's the big romance aspect to it. So I'm trying to like 
find that. I feel that like a for great her? gateway, even though it's not a manga and it's not an anime, is Lore Olympus on Webtoons. <gasps> Yo, okay. Nah, okay. Not. Oh, it's a webtoon. See, I don't know if I can get her yeah, to read yeah. webtoon. No, no, I could probably get her to read a light novel yeah. and watch an Lore anime. Olympus is a good no, gateway. No, stick, okay. stick a pen in that real quick. Real quick. Stick, oh. stick a pen. Stop, stop from Lore Olympus. Real quick. Joe, first of all, you got to read. Stopping. Yo, so my, my wife is a Harry Potter fanatic. Like, when I tell you I have never in my life, like, it comes on every weekend and she will sit there from nine o'clock in the morning to 12 o'clock at night and sit really? up here and watch every last movie. I feel like no that's hilarious. most Harry Potter fans though, but, right? But I find it crazy that you can get into Harry Potter, <laughs> but you can't come over just a little bit closer mm, and just come over you here know, really quickly. <sighs> there's someone that I know, and this, this happens a lot. I talk to a lot of people who like a lot of fantasy and then they talk to me about one or two animes that they watch. And I'm like, oh, that's really interesting. So I've noticed amongst Harry Potter fans, some of them really like um, the ancient Magus or the something ancient, like that. Ancient, ancient Magus, Magus Bride. Bride. Yes, yeah. yes. They really like that. I don't really love that's it, actually, but. Yeah. Hmm, that's, yeah. It's, it's, I've it's, seen, I've seen it's, like it's half It's good, but I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't know what it is about it. Like there's something about it that's just, it feels weird. And I'm like, I can't really, yeah. I can't really attach myself to this. Yeah. No, the first episode, I mean, it's just weird. Somebody is, like, kind of being sold to, like, this guy who has, like, a reindeer skull for I a, mean, skull for a there, face. Like there, are, <laughs> there are weirder starts to an anime, a.k.a. Undead Unluck. I didn't Luck. find that that weird, but, you know. Goblin Slayer. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah. But I but made really, the mistake of showing a friend Goblin Slayer the other weekend, and I was like, I I gave I gave warnings. Like I was like, I I'm giving why you would warnings. You do that though, is this his I first time watching anime? Huh? No, they've seen other anime, but they hadn't seen Goblin no. Slayer, and I'm oh. like, Joe. so um, I, I don't try, think I, so. Look, I gave I gave as best of warnings as I possibly could. So is Promise so. Neverland something you would give a first timer? Because I would. Yes, absolutely. Yes. I have given many people. The recommendation of Promise Neverland. Yes. I met a girl once. She said that she liked horror. I was like, watch only season one of Promise Neverland. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, that was the key. Only season, season one. And yeah, pick yeah, up yeah. the manga. And yeah. pick up the manga. Yes. I tried to get my wife to watch Promise Neverland and she just wasn't, she wasn't into it. She was like, the first episode kind of got her, but like yeah, yeah, after yeah. that, she was kind of fell off. I was like, ah, I will, go, I will down this hill, but that first episode will probably be top five for me of all time first episodes. That episode that, it's, is a it's really good. Yeah, it's yeah, really yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's really, really good. good. But Joe, um, I will say, um, back to Laura Olympus, bro. Okay. Amber would love I need to, Laura Olympus. I need to, okay. And there's there's a lot of chapters to it. There's like two hundred plus chapters. It's deep. Okay. Yeah, I'm like at chapter right. like fifty or sixty, but whew. All right, I'm, pick, I'm fully I'll, caught I'll up. I'll pick it up and then and then have her check it out. Because Haiti, like, there's just like, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's yeah. really fun. It's, good. it's really it's good. fun. It's good. Next part of this anime impact is, um, I guess, a two part question. It could it could be the same answer, but a two part question. One, favorite anime character of all time, and two, anime character that you identify with the most. <laughs> Holy crap, that question's really loaded. That I identify with the most. Yeah. Or, and to, it, can even, it, it can even be someone more recently. Like when I when we first started doing this, the most recent thing that had been out was Blue Lock. And I me and Asagi are like like that as far as the adaptability, the mm -hmm. the dreams, the goals, the not, you know, wanting to the whole conquering thing. Like I was me and like I see myself in a soggy light. So it doesn't have to, you don't have to go back too far. You don't have to go back to the Sailor Moon days unless <laughs> that's where you go to. But like, yeah. is there, I guess I'll even rephrase it. Is there a character that you really identify with lately in anime? Uh, that's a really good question. So I tend to identify in general with a lot of um, Tsundere characters, Sundere okay. characters, the ones yep. that are like really cold and run really hot. <laughs> that's me as a person. <laughs> So I tend to identify with those characters in general a lot. So like, even though my favorite character is Jupiter, I identify more with Mars okay. um, just because like, I feel like I'm really hard on the outside, but really mushy on the inside. <laughs> um, and then like my favorite character of all time, I, I guess I have to say it's Yoroichi just because really? like when, yeah, when I was watching Bleach, she was just like, it, it just felt like she was so inspirational for me because one bleach has a lot of good like like 
person of color characters. It does mm -hmm. it really well. Yeah. Um, and then Yoroichi is just a genuine badass. Like, how can yeah. you not love her? Sure. <laughs> I don't. I don't know a ton of people unless they're crazy that don't like Yoroichi for whatever different yeah. reason they have. But. I have not met one. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit of anime. First of all, we're gonna stop at One Piece. Like we we we've been kind of skidding the lines. Let's 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 talk One Piece. You're Robin Stan. So I am. One. Why is Robin your favorite? And two. Part two. Top five straw hats. Top five straw hats. Okay. So Robin is my favorite because I feel like it's really hard for me to love a lot of the women in One Piece, unfortunately. A lot of them end up falling victim to they need help. Um, and in the latest, not the latest, but in Wano, to see her level up and Wo Oda finally give her some additional feats, I oh, was yeah. like, yes, this is yes. the moment I've been waiting for. You know, Robin's always been like hyped up as this devil child because she comes from O'Hara and things like that and she's always been kind of mysterious and interesting because of like how we get introduced to her and how it all started um in Alabasta but like for her overall like her backstory I like the fact that she's kind of like she has this dark humor um I really love that <laughs> about her <laughs> like I like I was talking to somebody else about this I said like if I had to kick it with any of the straw hats it would be Robin we would be sitting in the dark listening to some music and making some like really dark jokes while drinking some wine like I feel like that would be me and Robin you know so I could really kick it with her as for top five straw hats obviously Luffy is there like we can't have one piece without Luffy or the straw hats without Luffy okay. um Robin's on the list. Okay. Uh, Jimbei. I, I like Jimbei's dynamic. Okay. He's like like this old grandpa, but then he, he really has these is. jokes. Yeah, and I like his uh, placement in Egghead right now, especially the start of Egghead. It's really funny. Yes. Yes. Uh, that's not, yeah, yeah, P, hold your tongue. <laughs> <laughs> hold uh, your so tongue, that's, P. that's three. Um, uh, who's next? I guess you could say Zoro. Like, I just... Okay, and there's you. nothing wrong with Zoro. Uh, okay. There's nothing wrong with Zoro except for the fact that, you know, the man sleeps a lot and he gets lost. Oh my god. We're uh, coming up on but he gets stuff done. He Here's does get stuff done. The man's very efficient. And when Luffy acts up, he steps up. So yeah, I appreciate so sad, him. Yeah, but he's we, the perfect yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, still, we still don't know his backstory, so let's just hold oh off on him for a little bit. Number one. I don't think we're ever gonna get it. Yeah, we're not. I think we're what we got in Wano was the most that's, that we're gonna that's get. What I tried to tell, oh, that's I what I tried so. to tell yeah. people. I don't, I don't I'm like, so. because so. there's no way there's no way we go to Wano, get even the slightest bit of like, oh, this is where Zoro kind of no. came I was, from. I was so mad about yeah, that. There's no way else. Here's here's the reason why I'm I may disagree. By the way, male has not said two characters that I'm waiting to hear. Perfect. Oh, oh my last more. my last one is Sanji. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll take my it. My last one is okay. Sanji. <laughs> I, I I like I like a dude that can cook and whole cake, whole cake arc really changed my perspective for me. Yeah. Oh, and it, was whole cake. That, and it was whole cake that changed her, Joe. Joe, yeah. what you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I I gave away my my extra Sanji Funkos, but I'd boot it right now if I could. Um, <laughs> whole cake is where my opinion of Sanji went down. Oh yeah, Preston's got one. Went down the drain. Damn. Like, I really like like him, and then I felt like his character came full circle in Wano when he crushed the raid suit. Like that it, was, it was cool. Yeah, I, I felt like from Whole Cake to Wano, we started like his character development and it came full circle in Wano. I mean, yeah, I, I can't, I'm not going to disagree with that. I, I will say a lot of my hate for Sanji comes from my love for Zoro. Like, I'm not, ah. I'm, a, I'm a Zoro stan. I mean, oh. we, got, we got Zoro there, we got Zoro there, we got Zoro. There. See, I, I don't, I don't think you here. have to do like one or the other. Like, no, I know there's a, a beef in the One Piece universe yeah. where it's like, you know, I, and I'm, Sanji and versus Zoro always. Yeah, and the thing is, I'm like that. But also, what solidified my dislike for Sanji was how he handled Whole Cake. Like, I mm. for you, it's how you, I, I, it had opposite I, effects for me. Like, and I, I think I've made, we've said this before on a video, but like you, you were trying to push Luffy away. Mm -hmm. Cool, got it. You were trying to keep, yeah. Let me spit, P. Let me let me go before you go. <laughs> you were you were trying to protect the Straw Hats and didn't want to drag them into your family drama or get them attached to Big Mom. Yeah, cool, got it. And then obviously on top of that, you're trying to protect Zef and the Baratier. Solid, got it. Very However, solid. Zef and Baratier, I don't have a problem with that. However, who is your captain? 
Monkey D. Luffy. Yeah. You, from the moment you met Luffy and how he even got you on to the Straw Hats, you knew Luffy wasn't going to not show up to Whole Cake Island. Be like, bro, either one, I'm going to help you with whatever you got, or two, let's bounce. Like, you don't mm-hmm. need to be here. Either situation was going to happen. And yeah. so you wanted to be a, a jerk and an asshole to him and, t- and tell him off. Like, Just you know what? Fine. Thing, huh? Cool. You trying to stick with the facade? Cool. This man, at the time, unleashed yeah. his strongest and hottest attacks on Luffy Boys. and made this man starve and then made my favorite girl, Nami, sit there, scream, and cry. Like, bro, what? For you didn't have to do all that. Like, it adds yeah. to the story, Oda. I, it adds to the story for sure. But, like, that's where I'm like, bro, yeah, you okay. lost You lost all my respect. Okay. You did. Like, the little bit that I had for you that I pretended I didn't have for you, it, it would I mean... So. I feel like I feel like I'm gonna low key say that I feel like sometimes I de- identify with Sanji just because he Talk. he was holding he was holding back like a lot of stuff and I, oh, I personally for, sure. for me I'm the type of person where like I know people can help me I know they'll come oh. through but sometimes sometimes I just gotta handle business my oh. way and, and, and yes so you had sure. time no I'm okay. I'm, not, I'm, I, I'm agreeing like I get that. But you could have done that without beating up Luffy. So Joe, Joe, here, here, here's, here's the thing that I that I made. Like even the fact of like beating up Luffy, I get it. Um, number one, I don't think we like characters who are humanistic, who like have this human side to say, I, I like, I am struggling. Yes, I can ask for help, but I want to deal with this, Joe. You know me. You know I do I, not I, like I, to I, ask yeah. for help, and I will deal with it the way I deal with it. I don't think we like humanistic characters, even when it comes to, and I hate to bring this guy up, but of course I am, even when it comes to Usopp. I don't think we like humanistic characters. Yeah. Like, everybody wants to be Zoro. Everybody wants to be Luffy. When in actuality, all of y'all are a bunch of Usopps. I mean, I, yeah. I'm, I don't disagree. I, I will say I do Enjoy humanistic character. Usopp I, I didn't me, say though, you. Just I, said, crap. I just said we. I, I said we. Us, but well, a, because but a, a hit dog will holler. talking about the character that I'm hating on. So. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, hit dog will holler. Oh, I, 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 I identify with identify the human with aspect that. of Sanji, though. I think it's that, Absolutely. exactly. Like, you you okay. see, you could see that in a regular human being on a day-to-day. Absolutely. Yeah. No, for sure. For sure. I, I'm, I'll lay off. I'll lay off Sanji. Okay. Let's transition to free run. Obviously, again, you made uh, at the time, guys. At the time of this video, her most recent video was about Free Run. I believe that was the most recent one. That's the last yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, most recent video about Free Run. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. Yeah. Um, doing doing an amazing job. She did an amazing job with the video. Um, Put stuff in there. Yeah, obviously, we talked about at one point. I'm curious your opinion on this because obviously, I'm a, I'm assuming you're a Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood fan. Yeah, I am. Okay, okay. So obviously, there was the whole thing with Free Run overtaking. Yeah. FMAB, um, you know, and as an FMAB fan, I'm gonna let it be. This isn't the first time this has happened to the community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we kind of it is what it is, right? Yeah, Oshi We're, Oshi no Ko, which I'm also a fan of, took yes. over for a little bit. Yeah. Um, and then obviously came down. And obviously, like, yeah, came back down. But how I guess what are your what are your overall thoughts on Fruin? Obviously, we we know that you enjoy the show, but um your thoughts on Free Run, your thoughts even maybe a little bit on how Free Run decided to climb the ladder and, and uh, deep throne full metal and brother here for a little bit uh you know that first episode really got me man i yeah. like cried uh i'm really emotional when i watch anime like one piece the whole like marine ford arc and what like luffy's backstory i cried for two weeks straight while binge watching it so my oh, eyes were it. constantly red <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so when i started watching free run i was like man i know nothing about himmel But I feel like I want to know so much about him after just one episode. Like there's like a gravitas to the start of Free Run that makes you really want to know the characters, despite the fact that Free Run is like really apathetic and she doesn't show emotion. But like that small sliver in which she's like showing emotion in episode one, it's like crazy. And they cover like a huge chunk of time. With that, with not a lot of action, yeah. I feel like that was very impactful. And free run takes like a very different approach. Where when we mostly watch anime, it's like it's during something that's very important to the story. Yes. Like they're trying to fight a demon lord, they're trying to like defeat the k- 
king of the land, whatever the case may be. And they're just like, nah, we're not going to show you any of that. We're going to show you free range journey way, way, way after that. And I was like, huh, yeah. I wonder how this is going to go. And surprisingly, it's like really pleasant to see. And they do a really good job of balancing out like the emotional aspects as well as like humor. I think it peppers in like all of the genres really well. And I think that's what allows it to pull in so many viewers and probably allow it to rank a little bit higher just because you're able to attract a more generalized audience. And you hit on this in your video. It's like exploring like human nature, like um, like you, you being immortal versus you like yeah. having a finite time, which we know Freeran like pretty much lives a Thousands great of years. Deal. But the fact that we get to see her, like when she cried, like for him, like I was like, ah, ah. Mm. Tears. Oh. She was like, she was like, it's only been 10 years. Oh, and I, but only, only been, 10 years. Only, and I was like, only, damn. <laughs> you know what happens in 10 years? <laughs> yeah, but to her, to her, that's probably like a few yeah. months for us, exactly. you know? And it's yeah. like, yeah. man. And what's so crazy is like we get on this journey and in some of the towns we stop at, she is like, I want to spend like maybe we could spend about seven, eight, nine, ten years here. And homegirl's like, yes. What? We got Vern like is like, nah, we bro, we got to go. We yeah. got to go. Which I, I and I'm not, I, I am so close to like, I don't know if there's a manga out, but if there is like, I am so close to like picking it up because I want to see the ending of like what's going to happen because she's going to outlive them. And yeah. I would love to see like what she becomes like after this, because this, this journey is going to be monumental for her. Like not yeah. only that, but like we're getting to like the heaven aspect of like tying up loose ends with, with old comrades. Like it, it's, it's, it's a yeah. good watch. Shout out to Joe because Joe actually, uh, yeah, Joe. Good. Yeah. I'll shout hey, you out. Joe, listen, Joe put man, me man. on to free run. Yeah. Man, honestly, man, I was not planning on watching free run. And then like, I felt like you were posting about it and I was like, mm, maybe I should check this out. Man, it, it it from the jump I'm like this is I mean Preston knows me I'm a big and until as of late yeah what is. what am I Preston what do I watch name like he, the two main genres that I watch man you can <laughs> name one he is an Isakai watcher to the I know it's a it's a kind of shonen is like it's is shonen, like yeah. what I what I watch like that if it's even as long as it's a decent Isakai. I'm I'm tuning in as long it. as it's a really it's a good shonen I'm watching it like this that's has just Isakai vibes it, it does. It, it does, but it's I mean, it's fantasy yeah, technically absolutely. because you're yeah. not from another world. Right. Yeah. I think is I think isekai is a subgenre of fantasy. Of fantasy, of fantasy. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, no, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, when I first saw it, I was like, I'm not really feeling it. But there are a couple people that were like, when they're dropping this, they drop. I think they dropped like three episodes, the first three episodes, as soon as it came out. Um, and they're like just taking that risk of like here, like shoving on people. And I was like, it doesn't sound my alley, but people are hyping it. Let me check it out. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, this is not my normal cup of tea, but it's a very good cup of tea. <laughs> like it was, <laughs> it was, it was different. It was refreshing. Um, it, the like you said, the human nature aspect of it, the more, more immortality versus finite, um, and even the action that they do have. There's not much. Like oh, we're yeah. dealing with major. The animation's here. nice. No, and, the animation for the action is great. The even this even though it's just like a little bit like a not even 10% portion of the show, they do it very well to give you that little taste of like most people who watch these fantasy animes with mages in it, there's some action involved 9 times out yeah. of 10. And they give you a, a minimal taste but a very good taste. It's um and yeah, it, I don't I don't know why. I even recommend to my dad, my dad, this is not going to be your normal cup of tea, but just watch. Just All watch right. it. So we'll see how it goes. And I will say what it what it does best because we we are always like linked to the action of like defeating the demon lord, but like nobody ever talks about like after what happens nah. after you defeat the demon lord, yeah. and we What's get next? to right. see like this. We get to see yeah, there are, uh, are factions of like different people who still like support the demon lord, but we also realize that Freeman is like freaking ridiculous. Oh, oh yeah, she's she's oh, she's op. Geez. She's op. Like ah, but and she's she's fun to watch. She's fun and hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love her. Yeah. I, it, it, it's it's really good. I enjoy it for multitudes of reasons, and I think like I think it deserves its place. I don't think anime should stay at the top of lists for a very long time. I think that means then the opinion of people's 
the perspective of anime in people in the community might be a little bit diluted if things just That's stay good. the same. That's good. Listen, you are well versed in anime. You watch a lot. No, you watch a lot. A little you watch, bit. You watch Shonen. <laughs> you watch Slice of Life. You watch Romance. You watch. It's like what? You just won't catch Dem me watching horror. Demon Slayer, Konosuba, Gundam. Now, what I will say is, because I, I saw a video on this, and I was like, "Ha, ah, Mashal, why are you on the fence for Mashal? Me on the fence? Yes. Um, you know, I feel like I'm here for the ride. I'm not really, like, <laughs> I'm not really, like, engaged, you know? That's why. You know, I laugh, and then I walk away, and I'm like, okay, this was Mashal. <sighs> oh. <laughs> I like I like Konosuba a lot just because it makes me I laugh like a lot more. But like Mashal, it's like oh he's it's it's the thing that you expect Mash to do because he's so strong. Obviously, like it's ridiculous when it does happen. It's like huh, they really came up with this. Like this was the course of action to take. Okay, interesting. Um, but I feel like I'm not really like pulled in to Mashal as maybe I am to other shows. I do love a good comedy though. Like my top genres definitely are like romance, comedy, and probably slice of life. I was gonna say P2, because I'm 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 also kinda on the fence with Mashal. Like I, I enjoyed the what I enjoyed the first on? season. But you've you've seen my you've seen my list P of all this all the show I've been watching lately. Like, I Mash have, and I Mashal realize Mashal is not nowhere. I love yeah, it. it's okay. it's on there. It's just in the orange. It's like I yeah I it's watch not, it, but it's not like I'm not loving it. It's yeah, not yeah, one yeah. for me. So, he, so here's the thing: the, as I get older in life, one thing that I've realized <laughs> is that one, the, the wise old man, I sometimes I just like senseless stuff, and I feel like Mashal is a very sen like it has it like a storyline, but like who really is caring about this storyline? It's more so like about the comedy. Now, the storyline, I do believe, especially in what. We're in season two now. Two, yeah. yeah. It, it's getting a little bit more in depth. Like we are actually seeing like who yeah. are the bad guys. Like and yeah. and we're also yeah. seeing that again. Student body runs everything. Like they were yes. to kill this man. And, I and will say that season two is a little bit better than season one right now. I it's agree with that. It's a little bit that. better because I think my opinion started off based on season one. And now that yeah. I'm like watching season two actively, I'm like, huh, I like this a little bit more. I feel like there's a little bit more involvement of the other characters as well. And it doesn't feel yes. like as stagnant. Maybe it'll go up Pete, to like the top of orange or the bottom of green as I continue. I think I've seen like the <laughs> it'll first. It'll never be in the middle of green. Two, it, it, yeah, like it'll be, I think the top of, I think I've seen three episodes now. And the thing for me, like, I feel like it also season two kind of started off slow. Like it, it tried to pick up where it left off. Like you not much was it. happening. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I feel like episode I feel like episode one. three, two, three is kind of where like okay, now we're getting you didn't what like you're talking one? about. It was okay, nah, bro. <laughs> it was okay. <laughs> it was all right. Yeah. But the thing I was like, oh, we're having a party. What's I mean, going the, yeah, on? The theme song. The theme song is great. You made the video. The girls love the song. I literally. The girls were like, "Daddy, can you play that song?" I was like, "Okay, <laughs> yep, here you go." Yo, like, the song is great, though. The song is amazing. Yeah, but the show is still the the song doesn't fix the show. <laughs> yeah, Joe, but there's some new gens that you kept, and I was like, ah. I right. mean, hey, listen, I'm not getting rid of Mashal. I'm not you getting got rid it of in the orange though. I do. Yeah. I got a lot in the orange. I still have Fluffy Paradise. Like that's still in green for me. <laughs> have you seen Fluffy Paradise at all? No, it's an isekai. No? I've been steering away from isekais <laughs> in general. I just, it's, I just it's... don't go near them anymore. Talk about I, it. I, f I feel you. P, it's, you've, it's, P, you've seen it. You've seen it. I was about it. to say, though. Yeah, I'm, go ahead, P. I'm on, I'm on episode three, and... It's cute, it's, right? It's very cute, but also at the same time, like, what is this little girl? Like, <laughs> this little girl is, is, is something else. Like, not only is she sassy, she kind of reminds you of Anya a little bit, but oh, like... Anya. Yeah, but just like... See, there you go. You gotta watch it now. <laughs> All right, maybe, maybe I'll watch it. Of, I love Anya. Yeah, she reminds you of Anya, except like with some extraordinary powers of her... Uh, yeah. yeah the, the attachment. Okay. But you'll get this in the beginning, but she okay. has this ability. She basically... She's a 
you know, uh, probably in her 30s um, worker. She gets home. Uh, she don't, passes uh, out. Uh, not, no. I mean, I'm not sure. No, it's the first episode. It's not going to That's the synopsis, though. I've seen yeah, the synopsis. synopsis. Okay, okay, she, okay, she, I'm telling you how she goes into this. Which I don't like, like not, it. Like, they could have done like her it. better. They could have done her better. She could have yeah. done it better, but it's like, it was, at least it was a different way. She passes out from being overworked. Like, she meets God, and God, like, hey, I need you to go do this task for me. Oh I'll give you superpower to go do it, though. And she's like, I want to pet fluffy animals. And he's like, okay, well, cool. I'll let you I be able to, like, fluffy. all animals are going to love you. And it, but it, like, it, that basic thing, it, like, it, it escalates in this world because it's different. Because yeah, it's when right. I tell you, like, Every animal, I don't care what animal you can think of, like homegirl is going creatures. to be able to retain it. Okay, so it's, it's interesting. All, all animals and non humans love it. her, basically. Yeah. I don't care. That's so. really fascinating. I don't care if it's a dragon. I don't care what it is. Like, it's going to love her. I think you pretty much said it already, but your favorite genre, again, you watch every dang near everything. I know you, I heard you say, except for horror, you're not going to touch horror, but I think I heard you say romance. Is romance your favorite anime genre? Yeah, I actively okay. look for romances whenever I'm bored. Um, that's like my go-to <laughs> genre. Like whenever, especially when I'm in a mood, I'm like, yeah, I just want to watch a really good romance right now. Joe has actually done a really good job of romance. I don't know if you saw my stories today. I am, I am you proud of you for about, sticking um, with a sign of affection. Oh, because let me take, we going to get into it. <laughs> Your favorite favorite anime uh, romance anime is what? Watakoi. Love is hard for otaku. Okay. Absolutely, okay. like my favorite one. Okay. But then in second, because I love comedy, is Kaguya Sama Love is War. <gasps> Yo, Kaguya Sama Love is War is great. It's fantastic. It's I so that's an good. anime I can rewatch forever. It's so good. Like you have these two, like two of the smartest somebodies who just cannot admit that they yes. both love. It is. It is great. It's it ridiculous. Watch. The schemes that they come up with and the narrator. The narrator. The narrator does it. Yes, he does it. He adds like another notch yeah. it's to the comedy. Kanye Sama wins. It, it, it's, it's great. Guess. It's great. It's great. I, I watched the first episode when it came out and then I was done. <laughs> but that was before. That was before. You know me again. <laughs> You're I, changed. You, that was before. Change, that man. was before I changed in winter of 2024. So I could I could see myself going back. Okay. And watching something. Oh, like we're that. finna do um, we're finna do an episode on Kaguya. Kaguya we, we Sama do an is legendary. We could do an episode on that. Um okay. So then I'm guessing I know two of them, but if you had um there's a newcomer to anime, um, and they only want to watch some romance anime, what are your three romance anime that you're like that would get them hook hooked on anime? I feel like this is so timely. I just finished editing a video like that. <laughs> Oh, wow. uh, let's see. Yeah, I'll post we'll, we'll it tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I'll be posting okay. that tomorrow. Um, so top romance anime I would recommend. One, um, My Love Story with Yamada-kun on level 999, 999. Mm -hmm. It's like really clean, very simple. There's no fluff to the story. Um, kind of like an opposites attract, what I, which I feel like is very popular for people. Um, that one's good. Another one is Horimiya. Horimiya has like a little bit of slice, slice of life built into it. And I like the fact that it not only focuses on the romance of Hori and Miyamura, but it also hones in on some of the other characters. Uh, additionally, Tomo-chan is a girl. I was really surprised by this. I thought I was going to hate it. Tomo-chan is a girl is definitely a bit on the bigger comedy side, but there's romance. Tomo is essentially a tomboy and she... <gasps> Huh? No, nope. I, I oh, have okay. picked it up. I take it back. I have picked it up. It is okay. so hilarious. It's hilarious because she loves her best friend, but her best friend doesn't really Does see her like as a romantic interest because they've been like bros since they and, were kids. And she yeah. is like a tomboy. Oh, yes. Tomboy. She wears like a short under her yeah. skirts. She only competes in boys sports because she's too tough to be in the girls sports. Like it's wild. Yeah. She's like has the strength of a guy. And like yeah. it's one episode to where she tries to dress. It, it's great. Go ahead, Joe. I was gonna say I have a friend that that reminds me of. Oh, <laughs> so that's, it's it's that's really funny. it's really good. And then um, I feel like uh, your lie in April. If you want to cry, <laughs> if you want to cry, your lie in April. It's a beautiful story. That's, I think that's, anyone that's anyone would right watch there. it. Yeah. And if we're going movie, then your name. I have some romance anime to catch up on after I 
catch back up on uh, all these winter anime. Um, <laughs> yo, you name your line, April. That's in my top ten of all time. Like not only I more, like, love the music. <laughs> Mr. Musician right here, Mr. Piano Let me tell player. You something. So not only do I love like your lion April is in my top ten, but I'm also a musician. I have probably done two cover songs off that anime. Like I love your line. <sighs> it's beautiful. Yeah. I I have a list of just like anime instrumentals that I just keep and I listen to whenever I just want to like focus on work. Yes. Um or if I'm in the gym, like I just keep that there. A lot of the I guess I'm getting sidetracked now, but a lot of the instrumentals I enjoy are like from Haikyuu, um, My Hero Academia. What's his name? It's Hayashi Yuki. I saw him at uh, Anime NYC and he had like a whole yeah. concert with My Hero like compositions. It was fantastic. I lost my voice to instrumentals somehow. I don't know. <laughs> oh, that's so dope. Joe, we got to get to Anime NYC. Yeah, CP, you know, yeah. yeah. I, yeah know. I saw they had Survive the Prophet like here last year yeah. who does the the openings for vinland saga yeah. i like a lot of their other general music but yeah i i have a real love and passion for anime compositions i don't play music my dad plays the guitar so oh, you know i think okay. it just it just resonates a little bit joe we finna be what we finna be romance anime junkies oh man i don't know about junkies but i will <laughs> definitely expand i've expanded my palette and i will continue to expand my palette p i promise i think go ahead Oh, I, oh, you can continue, but I think the best entry for someone who doesn't watch romance is a rom-com. Like, a romance comedy anime yeah. is the easiest way to get in. And then you can start getting into the dramatic stuff. So, so. what's the rom-com you would, you would, well, you already said, I, um. Yeah, uh, like, Tomo-chan, Tomo definitely Chan, Watakoi, yeah. um, Kaguya-sama, yeah. definitely that's really funny. I'm trying to think of any rom, rom, rom-coms that I watch. Because I feel like I watch a lot of dramas, too, for the most part. But I have to get back to you on that, like, on the side. <laughs> yeah, I will say I'm I'm emotional. So, like, I'm finna go to, like, crybaby status. Like, give mm. me your lie in April. Mm, yeah. Sometimes those are nice. Like, just get a nice cry out. Man, that's that's once a year. Like, your lie on April. Like, there are certain animes that I watch, like, every year. Your lie in April is one that I watch every year along with you, Yu Hakusho. All right, let's 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 talk a little bit about A Sign of Affection. Um, this is... <laughs> this is this is my... Uh, yeah, this is pretty much my first romance anime. Ooh. Um, mm-hmm. and, yeah, and it's... I mean, you guys have seen... Mel especially has seen my, my reactions to it. Um... At the point at this time, I think there's five episodes out right now. Just finished yeah. it, um, and Itsumi man is, I I'm fighting between wanting to support this relationship and uh, telling her not to do this. I'm all like, I go back and forth between being a like I feel bad for Aoshi, but I'm also like Itsumi put him in his place at one point. My issue, my main issue with this show, and you, I, I have a feeling you're gonna say the same thing, P. My issue with this show. Is how handsy this man is. Number like, one, this man, this man, like, bro, personal like, space, me, please. Personal space, bro, <laughs> bro. Literally, in this last episode, just fed her like she is a child and can't be like. Is there's mean, just there's just so much that I'm like I, I feel like I feel like it wouldn't. Sl- I'm, and that's the thing I want to ask too. I'm like, just in general, and, and I guess I can ask you as as a normal romance fan, like the things that Itsumi does, would that slide in real life? I mean, like, all right. So contextually speaking, if we think about general anime romances, the way that anime is depicted with romance is traditionally the way I guess that Japanese people interact with romance. So it's very slow burn. But I think okay. if we flip it a little bit and think about Itsuomi, who is from abroad, he lives in Germany. Um, people, I feel like in, even in America, they tend to be a little bit more handsy, they're a little, little bit more touchy-feely, um, and they don't really have sense for boundaries sometimes. So I think we've inter- this yeah. is one of the very first anime that I've seen introduce a character who's come from abroad, lived abroad mostly. So he's interacting with romance in the way that he understands it, not in the traditional way that we see romance in anime and the way that we see romance kind of from the perspective of a Japanese person. I, I, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like him, but I don't at the same time. It's, he, he, for, is, for me, he is it's a tad aggressive. He is a tad aggressive. Possessive. 
Number oh, one. Oh, he is possessive. Possessed. Number one. Number two, he he's coming off absolutely possessive. Number mm-hmm. three, I feel like I don't want to say because he's like more um experienced, but he's been out in the world. Like sometimes I just feel like you're like kind of like playing yeah, yeah, yeah. my girl. Number three, number he's a four, player, bro. He's too <laughs> he's too smooth not to be a player. Number four on episode because I'm only on episode three. There is a girl that is waiting oh. for you. Oh, Miss Emma. Emma. Emma <laughs> Chung. Bruh. Yeah. Hey, episode five. Episode when I five? tell you, when I tell you, yo, like I was like, I want to put hands on dude. Because I'm like, oh, so this the you on demon time. Like, this what you mm. want to do to my girl? You on demon time. And not only that, but I feel like the 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 friend who can sign her, I'm I'm terrible with names. Oh, um, she. Oh, she. I feel like he's Oshi. getting kind of like a a bad rep. Like I feel like he just wants yeah, to protect her. Yeah, he doesn't her. deserve it. He's yeah. very bad at doing it. Yes, he's bad at doing but it. But he just wants to protect her. Yeah, no, and I, he sees I understand. What we see an old dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, absolutely. Like his possessiveness. Like it's when he has red flags. I'm not saying the man does not have red flags. He has red flags. But <laughs> Oshi, red flags. Uh, yeah, Oshi also has red flags as well because he's a classic sundere where he doesn't want to express his emotions and he gives it off yes. the worst way. So unfortunately, like we exactly. are introduced to both the ma- love interests and they don't have redeeming qualities to. For the from the jump, let's just put it that way. So it's really hard. Um, but because I've read the manga, I don't feel a certain type of way. <laughs> it seems like he has feelings for for the main character as well. And I'm trying oh, like I agree with that, and I'm yeah, hoping yeah, yeah. that there is something like that's going to blossom off of that. Um, because I want to see what old dude does when his when her childhood best friend who can sign like confesses his love is as how i'm hoping this goes i cannot wait for you all <laughs> Mail, to see the next few episodes no i'm just saying i can't wait for you to see the next few episodes <laughs> no! just like how Itsuomi is fast the manga pacing is fast okay. this is gonna all make right. me pick up the manga uh, i'm gonna wait I'm gonna wait. I'm, 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 yeah, I'm gonna wait. If Joe, if you pick up a romance manga, let me tell you something. <laughs> you are wait. doing the Lord's work. We wanted to play two, two quick games with you to end it off and then have one last question to kind of wrap up the interview. Um, the first one is a blind ranking. I think you've seen some of our videos where we do that. Oh, yes. Um, uh, oh, my God. I fear for my life. <laughs> anime blind ranking, anime edition. Number one, we have, uh, let's do JJK. Oh, yikes. That's really quick. Uh, let's put that at number three. Oshinoko. That's going at number two. One Piece. One. Free Run. Uh, oh, yikes. I feel like I'd want to put Free Run at three, but I guess we're putting it at four. So that means signs of affection. That's fine. I think it has a place at five. Oh, very confident. There wasn't much debate about that. She knew exactly what she wanted. Yeah. I, like it. I, thought, I thought Oshinoko and... Nah, Ooh. see, I've been reading the manga for Oshinoko for a while. And as someone who listens to K-pop music and wa- like follows K-pop bands, I see like a lot of connection between Oshinoko and the idol life and the yeah. entertainment industry. It feels very like dark, but also interesting. And there's the element of mystery. I really love Oshinoko. All right. Second one. Uh, we got some rapid fire questions for you. A couple of them are this or that. Um, okay. and there's some that are just a general question that you get to answer however you want to answer. Okay. Cool. All right. So well, we know how this first, first one will go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Actually, no. Maybe we'll see. Um, first one: Sanji or Zoro? Sanji. <laughs> Anya or Boji? Anya. <sighs> okay. Uh, slice of Life or Shonen? Which now I know the answer to. Slice of Life. If there was one anime power system that would we could adopt in this world, what would it be? What would you want it to be? Power system? Yeah. Oh, man, that's a loaded question. Um, definitely not One Piece. <laughs> I want to swim. Um, <laughs> okay. I feel like just because it's very recent, I really love the Undead Unluck power system. It's very bonkers. Okay. Suspense and thriller or comedy? Comedy. Oda rushes to finish One Piece or Oda never finishes One Piece? 
Yikes. Wow. Uh, <laughs> man, that would mean I'd die and never read finish the end. God. Right. Oh, no. Um, I guess we're going to go with... <laughs> Oh, I don't like regrets. <sighs> you know what? Never finishes it. I would hate to be disappointed. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm the same way. I, that that would have been my answer. No, he needs yeah, to watch um, the that. I do not want to die without one piece. Eat to me versus from Sign of Affection. Uh, yeah, Signs of Affection or Kill from Fruits Basket. That's a good one. Kill from Fruits Basket. <gasps> okay. Yes. Christmas filler episode or beach filler episode. Christmas. The beach filler episodes just give me the ick. Uh, yeah, I can see that. Actually, now that I think about that, yeah, I can see that. First anime crush. Ichigo. Favorite anime villain. Favorite anime villain? Uh, Doflamingo. Nice. <laughs> Very awesome. Yeah. All right. That's it. That was that was that for the blind reaction. Thank you. That was, oh, that was good. Oh, awesome. I thought that was, was going to be really rough. The roughest one definitely was that Odo question because I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. That question's I way too loaded. I a good one. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. That was um, way too loaded. Yeah, no, I just, if honestly, like, I want, like, I don't want to die without One Piece not finishing. So if you got to put a rush on that thing, even if I'm upset, can't do like, it, bro. don't can't let do me it. die without can't not knowing it. what's happening. There's, there's nothing worse to me in this world than, like, something that could potentially be a masterpiece and then it just getting demolished. But you never, never get land. a chance. What, if, what if you're like, that's oh, fine. Promise promise never that's fine. The... Really? So you could be 90, like getting ready to clock on up out of here. And that's Oda's okay. like, let me go ahead and finish this on up. That's okay. So closing question. Is there anything that you would go back and change on your like anime journey, whether it's like content creating, YouTube, like looking at or listening to different things? What would you change? Or would you change anything? Um, You know, I feel like if I changed anything, it would probably be starting off with stuff that maybe I was a little bit more interested in because I feel like I'm doing that more so now. Um, and I feel like yeah. it's actually gaining a little bit of traction versus like some of my earlier stuff. Obviously, things take time, but I feel like I've always been an analysis head. I like analyzing things. I like themes. I like watching things that have like deeper meaning. And I'm always looking for meaning in any type of meaning, like media that I'm watching or enjoying. So I feel like I kind of wish I would have started more with that or found a way to do it so that like it worked with the way I started. For me, and I, you see everybody always talk about the same thing. So, like, finally talking yeah. about something that you, like, like and that you enjoy. Like, no, we're not talking about the big three. No, we're not talking about, like, all shonen. But, like, to actually, like, put yourself into something that you actually enjoy and that you want to research absolutely makes the difference. Yeah, I, I agree. I, like, notice in general, even looking at my playbacks, the body language difference, the tonal difference, and the engagement difference. Yeah, like, it's yeah. just yeah. worlds apart. Yeah, you're connected to what you're talking about. You're passionate about what you're talking about versus just talking about whatever it is that's popular or what people want to hear about. Exactly, Absolutely. exactly. Yeah. Well, great. That's that's it. That's all we had for you, Mel. Thank you so much. Really, really uh, appreciate you being on the show. Really appreciate your time. Uh, this was fun. Uh, I know we got a little bit, a little taste of Mel before we get to live, <laughs> um, but we want. To, we feel like we want to give you, I feel like you have a lot to say. And again, a lot of deep stuff, but you, you're very knowledgeable, like you said, analytical about anime. Um, and so definitely want to give you a space to kind of share that and, and share, your, share your side of things. So we really appreciate your time um, and you joining and us today. Really quickly, one more time, plug your socials. Yeah, absolutely. First, thanks for having me on. It's been fun. I love your content and I love interacting with you. It feels very genuine and I love your perspectives. But yeah, you can check me out on YouTube at It's Animal or you can check me out also on TikTok at It's Animal. On Instagram, it's at It's underscore underscore Animal. Wow. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> with that, that is the end of episode three of Life with Anime Podcast. We really appreciate your time, guys. We'll see you next time. Peace. Peace. Peace.